the sky one I'm all at a time the blood sings a while I'm running naked in the sun He's got in the trees I'm weak in the knees and the sky is a kind of blue I want to look around but honey all I see is you all right, so it's day seven out here, and I've been wearing the same clothes every single day since the start. Socks are starting to smell pretty bad, so I'm gonna do laundry out here for the first time on the trip. Get a full reset going. I put on a fresh shirt today. Have you also been wearing that same pair of clothing to bed? Every single night. With the exception of like maybe one night, I think I hung my underwear on the line, because I did jump into the lake once with my underwear to clean them. But yeah, I've been sleeping in the clothes every single night because they're dry. And I just figured, like, why dirty another pair of clothes? Just basically keep the dirt going as long as you can. Get all the nasty juices out of these. Brand new. Ready for another day in the bush. After Jammin Lake, the Depot turns into a proper river with many sets of rapids along the way. We would be traveling approximately two days before having to leave to make our overland crossing to the George River. From our campsite, we heard the roar of the first set of rapids. Once entering the Narrows, we lined our boats cautiously before getting out to scout. After the portage, the river remained pretty shallow and required more lining and maneuvering. I may have to go right into that deep water channel, eh? Not like out to there. I'll have to say up the river from that rock that's in the middle. Where'd you here? With waves getting a little beefier, we decided to throw the spray decks on. Our first technical set required some navigation through shallow rocks, which we would then need to ferry across to river right to make our line. Yeah, now let's make our way across. I'm not really sure where to go. I don't know how we're going backwards into a rock here. The fun continued for the rest of the morning and was non-stop. I think our team is all in agreement that river travel is our favorite type of canoeing. Drop. When running rapids in a remote area, we aren't looking for the biggest or wettest line. Typically, we try to get down in the tamest section of the river, which we can usually be found along the shoreline or behind big boulders. When riding wave trains, back paddling helps slow the boat down to give you more control and make you less wet. We rely heavily on these strokes when paddling unfamiliar or technical white water. We soon came to a section that required us to do a full scout right. mission. And after some discussion, we found the line that would work if we stayed to the river left. Want to make 
make our way to the left. Oh, I see that cliff there at 12 o'clock. The risk of running rapids increases dramatically when you're in such a remote area with a full boat of supplies to get you through the next month. Tipping or pinning is definitely something we want to avoid and weighs heavily in our decision making. Yep. Hard, hard, hard. Right through. All right, so we just made our way down a pretty beefy set of rapids. Beefy when you're considering we're out here in the middle of Labrador. Uh, so we just made it down, actually like stuck our line perfectly. Noah did an awesome job navigating us down here. And uh, yeah, now the boys are just loading up and we're gonna catch them on film, show you guys what it's all about. We probably paddled about four or five kilometers today and most of that has been rapids on the Depa River. Some really like small class ones and some swifts and then also some bigger juicier sets like this last one you just saw. So it's been lots of fun so far today. So we have made it to the proper Depa River now. We'll have two days of river travel. This morning we spent three or four hours lining our canoes and hitting some decent sized rapids. And now we're on a more wide, calm stretch. And the terrain here is like nothing we've seen before. It's, uh, there's like a barren aspect to it, but it's just like all glacial, cobble sized rocks, gravel bars. It's a pretty remote spot here. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be our days for the next two days traveling this river until we get to the next head of land. Got a pretty nice spot today for lunch. Overlooking this mountain and this river that's pouring into the Depa. Alright, so we've made it about 26 kilometers so far today along the Depa River and we've just been hitting a whole bunch of class 1 and class 2 uh, rapids pretty much the whole way down. It's been an awesome ride and just through some like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wilderness. It's incredible out here. It's hard to like stay focused on the rapids in front of you when there's just like, <coughs> other than the bugs, when there's just so much beauty along the sides. Oh man. That one still feels like it's moving down there. It's really starting to hit me. We're only on day seven, just like where we are. Like we are remote, remote, remote. Northern Quebec, Nunavik. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. So we just made it to our campsite for day seven. Best site yet. Best site yet. Yeah. Best site yet, yeah, sure. Five star. Five star, world class site. With a view of both rivers.
Probably going to throw me that ball. Oh, it threw it to me. <laughs> oh, nice catch. <laughs> <laughs> Here we've got pasta chili with a big bag of Parmesan cheese mixed in with it. Woo! Ground beef, kidney beans, and tomatoes, and white beans. I think I put some chickpeas in here because they're good for you. All the fun seasonings. And a buttload of pasta. We've gone 75 kilometers in the last two days. We're all pretty hungry. Yeah, we need those carbs. morning of day eight and it's about that time of the trip where you guys start taking stretching a little more serious muscles are starting to cramp up a bit so it's a good idea when you have a dry floor and not a lot of bugs to stretch out those muscles a bit looking forward to mine the boats are being loaded Chaz here is just packing his final uh, toiletries bag, his day pack. I think we're all in agreement that this has been the best site by far. Yeah, definitely. I'd agree with that fact. Having ample room to sit down on dry floor yeah. is uh, something we haven't even experienced yet in over a week, actually. Many times we would just end up getting to camp at the end of the day and we'd all be looking at the ground trying to find a spot to sit down and there'd just be like wet moss everywhere and none of us actually want to sit but we're so tired after a long day all you want to do is sit. It's a struggle out there sometimes. It's all worth it though. Oh yeah boy it's a struggle. And then right off the bat we have ourselves the class... Class two. Class four or five right here. No we just got like a little... I don't know if you can actually call that a swift. The rapids here aren't like they are in back in southern Ontario, Nova Scotia. It's not like one obvious line. It's the entire river is just like moving water and like waves crashing over. So, so far on the Depa, any line you choose, if you just go straight, you should be fine. It's just big water. But we all know as we make it to Mistassin later on the trip, it's going to be pretty gnarly. So we're, we're trying to work a lot as a team and, and get ourselves um, more familiar with the spray decks, but this has been a great practice river to start the uh, the white water running. A lot of firewood. We should have come here last night. So people come here from the states to just like they really need fourteen caribou. Yeah, that's just what they do. They just see it's ridiculous. He she killer slept here, filled three tags with one shot. So I, I, I know climate change plays a big role on the these caribou populations, but overhunting is obviously a huge issue as well. Yeah. I 
Oh man. Yo, do those look like claw marks? Definitely. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. <laughs> oh yeah, look at this. You actually see the nails. Not 10 minutes after leaving the hunt camp, we see splashing downriver. We first think it's a set of rapids, but we soon realize it's something much more exciting. Oh my god. With the population at a dramatic decline, we didn't think in our wildest dreams we would have a chance to see the George River caribou herd. We watched in silence as 30 to 40 caribou crossed the river. After, after catching basically no fish on the Depa for the last two days, we finally got a little brook trout. Finally. And isn't she beautiful? I love those colors. They never get old. Nope. We're going to let her grow so that she can grow. Go ahead, girl. Nice. Maybe that's good luck for us. Maybe, I hope so. Maybe we'll get some down the road. I hope so. But in the meantime, we've got a set of rapids to hit. Shorelines are starting to get a lot more sandy out here. And we're paddling ourselves through another beautiful mountainous landscape. These camps have just been littered along the river. And they look pretty run down and like they haven't been used in years. Yeah. Might need to take this on a portage. Two people can handle that. Fill her up. On our map, there was a class four rapid marked, and we would have to portage or run it before making to our campsite for the night. We scouted a line on river right that would take us through a boulder garden, but would effectively keep us away from the big water. With so many rocks, we were constantly readjusting and making reactive maneuvers over small pour overs and semi deep water channels. It was a little sketchy, but eventually both boats make it through. Let's go for it. Draw, draw, draw. All right, so we just made it to another big milestone for us on this trip. We're at the very end point of the DePaul River, or the end point for us, where it meets up with Party Creek, uh, where we're gonna be making our way over to the George River. Incredible spot here, once again. Beautiful mountains all down this river. We finished the day off with a, a class four, 
that we were able to kind of sneak down the side of uh, where we felt safe enough not risking too much out here and uh, now we're just catching some brook trout so that we can have a little bit more calories in our dinner tonight because tomorrow we have a 10k portage between here, the DePauw River and the George River, uh, kind of following along uh, Party Creek. So super, super cool. The bugs are not holding back. The rain is not holding back. The brook trout are not holding back anymore, thank God, because we we're finally catching some fish. And uh, yeah, everyone's in high spirits. We're feeling good. Oh, Buddy boy! Yeah. Hold her up for the kids to see. Oh yeah. All right, where's your buddy at? Over there. We made it to camp at a decent hour, and with rain stopping and a glimpse of sun, we decided to hike one of the mountains to get a better perspective of the Depa River, as well as scout our upcoming portage. So today was a special day. We finished our time on the Depa, and we're gonna be going up the Party Creek, across the height of land, to the George. We've heard a lot of bad things about this portage. It's about nine or 10 kilometers, and it should take an entire day. And just to give you guys an idea of what our route's gonna look like, we climbed to the peak to scout where we'll be looking tomorrow. And you can tell there's, there's a lot of mountains, a lot of bushwhacking. A lot of black flies. So despite having a massive portage tomorrow, we still decided to hike to the top of a mountain. You realize about halfway up that it was maybe higher than you thought it was when you set out to climb it in the first place. <laughs> Worth it though. Jerry's still out on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little warm up for the uh, 10K portage we have tomorrow. Sounds like it's raining in here. I know. Click, click, click. <laughs> Tonight we were happy with our progress. We all had an uneasy feeling in our stomach of what the next few days would look like. The hard work was just getting started. 